the options that you have. Things are going to change. The ways we work, the tasks we do are going to change. I think workers are overly worried about AI. I don't think AI is coming to take their jobs. Right now, there's a lot of talk about artificial intelligence. But setting aside the sci-fi scare stories, AI-based systems are rapidly reshaping Europe's economy. So in this episode, we're asking what AI means for the world of work. Might it make those tricky, tedious tasks easier? Or is it actually coming for your job? And if you're not in the firing line just yet, will you be working next to a bot sometime soon? Welcome to Real Economy. Artificial intelligence is transforming the workplace. In a recent report, around 75% of the firm's questions said they plan to adopt AI-powered systems by 2027. That obviously brings opportunities, but also risks. In a moment, we'll see how AI-powered tech is revolutionising jobs here in the Netherlands. But before all that, here's our crash course. In the future, AI will perform many tasks currently done by humans. It's already chipping away at certain types of work. Right now, some tasks linked to admin and clerical jobs look very vulnerable. But while AI will certainly displace jobs, most experts believe it will create new ones. So what might the future workplace look like? AI is expected to boost productivity by removing mundane tasks. But workers will have to adapt and upskill to this new reality. AI-powered algorithms already monitor employee performance and could be used in the future to hire and fire staff. That raises issues around transparency, accountability and fairness in the workplace. The future depends on how AI systems are deployed and the worker protections that are put in place. Dutch supermarket Picnic is attempting to revolutionise the online grocery sector. Highly automated centres like this one in Utrecht are full of lots of AI tech. The firm says that enables it to deliver food fresher, faster and cheaper. A clear edge in a highly competitive industry. In addition, Picnic says its adoption of AI has created lots of skilled new jobs while removing much of the hard graft done by workers in hubs like this. AI creates an opportunity for many, many people that there are new jobs that don't exist currently that they can do in the future. This is about creative work, but also technology takes over the repetitive work and the hard work. Picnic says its tech and business model allow it to be more sustainable. The supermarket already delivers for free in fully electric vehicles. But data-driven analysis to cut down on food and packaging waste are also central to its operation. A service like Picnic can operate in a very sustainable way, but this goes a step further, where we are not only with good forecasting make our service uh, and our operations sustainable, but also our suppliers. Used well, AI potentially offers big benefits, but what happens when the tech ends up invading our every moment? Joseph is a bicycle courier for a leading on-demand delivery service in Amsterdam. He says he's fed up of constantly being monitored by the company while on shift. They track everything that we're doing whilst we're at work. They can see if we stop somewhere for five minutes and they could ask questions about why are you taking so long when you're just simply having to do things that you have to do whilst at work. Dutch unions agree, saying more should be done to rein in delivery firms, especially the use of AI algorithms in the bid to improve productivity. We see a lot of problems as a union for workers. Wages are low, there's no security, and there's no safety. And for instance, in some cases, bonuses are being taken away if a rider doesn't deliver at a given time. This really leads to uh, unsafe situations, and this, I think, should be made illegal by law. One concern is that AI will lead to more, not less, precarious work in the so-called gig economy. I want to feel that I can go to the toilet, eat some food, change my clothes when my clothes are wet through from the horrible weather that we have sometimes. And I want to feel like I'm not going to be punished for that, but I don't even know what's happening with the algorithm. 
how to reap the benefits of AI while ensuring fairness, inclusion and safety at work. Just one of the many questions experts and policymakers tried to answer at this year's recent EU Social Forum in Brussels. To know more, I spoke to the EU's Chief for Jobs and Social Rights, Nicola Schmidt. Artificial intelligence is reshaping economies, it's disrupting labour markets. What's the European Commission doing to make sure workers' rights are protected? What is important is that we do not hamper this technological change, but we make sure that we are identifying the measures we need to protect workers. The first important directive we are working on is the protection of platform workers because they uh, are directly affected by algorithmic management. And we are now pushing very much for the adoption of this directive, which on the one hand gives guarantees to protect workers in the context of algorithmic management, but also to protect them in terms of uh, social rights, social protection rights, health and so on. In addition to its platform directive, the EU is finalising its AI Act. That seeks to create the world's first rulebook for such tech. Those working on better global regulation say good governance of AI is needed now. What we see at this moment is that AI looks very much like a car without brakes and without seatbelts, being driven by someone without a driver's license. And if we let things go as they are now, I'm afraid that the benefits are for those which are already now benefiting from AI, which are the big tech and the multimillionaires of this world. Another top topic was training and improving digital skills. In the future, 90% of jobs will need them. Right now, more than a third of the EU's labour force lack what's required. One Nobel Prize winning economist says workers should try to adapt. They should try and find out what's going on in their company and find out how they can train themselves in the direction of the new technology, work with it, and they'll feel much more satisfaction. We have uh, to create a real mindset of lifelong learning, of people knowing that they have to be retrained, they have to be reskilled, they have to be upskilled, not just with the risk that they lose their job, but with the guarantee that they will find another job. There are clearly a lot of challenges, but there are also opportunities with this technology. Where do you stand in the whole debate? I am not a techno-pessimist. We can have a better world thanks to technology. We can have better work organisation, taking away from people the repetitive or really tedious work, but this means that we have to keep control. It's not about predicting the future or fearing uh, about the future, it's finally to shape the future. That's what we have to do. Commissioner, thank you. Thank you.